Hi, so today I wanted to make a really short video about how to structure the writing for your discussion. So I'm now in my third year of my PhD and I've written a couple of papers and I really noticed that writing a discussion can be the hardest part but also the most satisfying part and I think it's also the part where you can show most of your creativity as a researcher and as a thinker. So if you want to have some tips and tricks on how to structure writing the discussion, let's get straight into it. So first of all, when you write your paper, I think it's it's best to write it from the inside out and that's to say that you first write your results then the methods afterwards the introduction and finally the discussion and the reason for this is that if we start with writing the discussion we often don't have a clear idea of what the most important findings are of our paper our paper usually has three four or even five findings and just listing all these findings is not that interesting you usually want to show it kind of as a narrative story in your discussion and really try to think about the bigger implications of your findings and that's why we usually write the discussion last. Then the second tip is to really take a step back when you're writing your results. So don't immediately start writing your results down but really try to take a step back, back and think about what your results show and mean in the bigger context of the existing literature right now. So usually what I do is I write for every paragraph the main finding and then I try to find if these findings are confirmed by previous literature or if they actually maybe show the opposite from previous literature which also sometimes happens and then you try to kind of make a list of literature that you can find that confirms or maybe shows the opposite from your results and see how your results fit within this wider narrative that is currently happening within the scientific field and depending on how big your topic of interest is or how big your topic of research is you may have to go through quite a lot of literature to truly get a sense of where your results stand but diving into this literature literature really will give you an understanding of the wider field and also an understanding of which bits and parts are still missing. So for example right now we're writing an paper on Parkinson's disease and we found that certain cortical thickness areas and also subcortical volume areas were similarly degenerating in the Parkinson's group as has been previously found by other papers but we also found an area that actually wasn't really found in previous papers with neuroimaging but has been found when we look at more pathological studies and this is quite interesting and also something that we are quite excited about but yeah I would really recommend you to try to see where your results stand in the wider literature and this brings me to the third tip and that is to discuss it with colleagues of yours that have more information and this may be a professor or maybe a fellow PhD student but when you explain your results to them and really try to explain to them where you think your results stand and where you think your results lie you can kind of gauge if your narrative makes sense to another expert in the field because quite often to us our narrative is really clear it makes a lot of sense but to another PhD student or a professor it maybe a little bit less unclear or maybe they have recommendations of certain literature that you've neglected or haven't read about yet and that would be really good to be aware of before you start writing your discussion or before you submit your paper. Then another paragraph that you usually always have to write is the shortcomings and limitations. So this is usually one short paragraph where you describe all the limitations that your study had and it's good to here be really honest about the limitations that your study had and it's fine if you have a lot of limitations like studies are never perfect there will always be future avenues that have to be researched and discovered and I personally as a researcher find these parts quite interesting to read to really see which parts were neglected in the study or weren't considered yet and also where I can contribute if I decided to research this topic so think about what kind of shortcomings your study had and that can be for example maybe a limited sample size or maybe you didn't include a certain covariate in your study. Then there's usually also a paragraph about the wider societal impact and this doesn't always have to be the case but for my field usually we do include this because we're working with patient groups so it's also good to see how our results would affect these certain patient groups and just try to consider how your results could impact for example clinical processes or other parts of society that should be considered. One final tip that I have that always really helped me with the discussion is to write the discussion down 
in the form of a mind map. So trying to walk yourself through your results by mind maps or by visual images and try to link every part of the literature that you found to these visual images kind of in a word cloud. And I find doing this process, it takes a really long time, but it's very satisfying. And it also really gives you a snapshot overview of what your results mean in the wider context. So if you have other tips for writing the discussion, please let me know because I'm currently in the process of writing my discussion and I always find the tips that you guys have very helpful as well. So finally, something else that I wanted to mention is that we're currently looking for a video editor and an animator for different types of videos on neuroscience because I want to, in the future, make a few more videos dedicated to computational neuroscience and I would love to have someone else on the team that can help me with this. So if you love editing or you love animating videos I will post a job description down below and you can apply through there and otherwise see you next week bye